everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Prusa XL again. It's been over three months since I last talked about it and there's been some new developments. Some things I don't like and some things I do like. But before we move on, let's talk about some things that I mentioned from the first impressions but are still kind of an issue. So stringing. For some reason, stringing really isn't very good on the Prusa XL. In fact, the Prusa Mini actually has better stringing or the prints look better unless you clean them up a bit because of the stringing. The stringing is that bad on the Prusa XL, especially if you use some stringier filaments like Flexible or Silky PLA. Those ones were really bad, but normal PLA for the most part is okay or doable. Granted, you could always clean it up pretty easily. It's just something that I would like to be fixed right off the bat. And Prusa did mention it in an article uh, in one of their blog posts that they were going to be working on it a little bit, though they also mentioned that some of it has to do with the filament. No, definitely not. It's the machine more so than the filament at this point because the Prusa Mini is fine with the exact same filament. So another thing I mentioned from the last one was this PTFE tube being really annoying and yeah that's still very much the case. Inserting and loading filament is a pain the, and then taking it out is also a pain. But one of my at least favorite part about the tubes that I mentioned was the fact that it wastes a lot of filament every time you run out. Which a solution to that I think that would be pretty simple would be to have like a little mod up here somehow and then have it the filament sensor only detect it when it gets to the sensor that's actually here up in the nozzle because I know they have one and then when you unload it, it you could just pull it out right there and then load your new filament in. Why they don't have something like that I don't really know because it's really a pain wasting a lot of filament after each time. The final big thing that I mentioned in the last one was that there was leaving little marks on here that would actually get on the first layer of the prints. That seems to have been resolved. It was just a software update that they would have had to have done in Prusa Slicer, and luckily they have done that. At least it appears to, as I haven't been seeing it in any recent prints. Anyways, let's start talking about some of the good things that I've been finding after using it for about three months. So the first really big positive about the Prusa XL is despite not really doing anything these last three months and printing with uh, however many hours I'll have a screenshot on right now on the Prusa XL, it has, hasn't had really any issues. The quality has been perfect and I've been able to sell really all of the prints I've printed off this machine. There is always a couple of exceptions as I have had this one issue recently actually that caused these weird lines. I'm not sure if that was a corruption in the SD card as their SD cards are pretty bad, but if it was then I could easily just get a new one. I did end up reprinting it with a new slicing file and it worked totally fine, so it may have been. But if it wasn't, I'm really not sure what caused the lines. But I wasn't able to sell those, which is kind of unfortunate because that did use about a half a roll of filament. Another positive that I found is that the Prusa XL handles flexible filaments really well. I was able to print two pairs of shoes that were for my size of foot and they used like a two full rolls of filament and it didn't clog, it didn't do anything, it just worked first try, which was absolutely amazing. And I finally remembered to swap out the bed, unlike when I did it with the Prusa Mini. <laughs> that was still pretty unfortunate. But yeah, it handles flexible filaments. So my favorite part about the printer, aside from like the size and the lack of having to fiddle with the printer at all, is definitely having this second tool head. Having this second tool head has really made it pretty fun to make prints like this, where I can do just two color prints without having to worry about anything, and even do two color prints with flexible, which is kind of fun. Another thing that I really want to try with the Prusa XL that I haven't quite done yet is doing something like putting nylon and then like PLA or something. I don't know if that would exactly work because of layer adhesion, but I'm sure there's some material out there that would work. I don't really plan on doing soluble supports, but as far as using the second tool head, I've been really impressed with it because it has worked perfectly. I've not really seen any issues when combining the two tool heads at once, which is kind of crazy because it literally just moves back and grabs the tool head and then goes back and grab it again. It's actually kind of mesmerizing to actually watch it printing when it's using the second tool head.
Hey everyone, <laughs> just realized that I didn't have anything about Input Shaper, so I figured I'd make this quick recording mentioning the fact that I have been using Input Shaper for the last month. I did a video on it where I just did a comparison between the Prusa Mini and XL earlier, but as far as actually using it, it's been going really well, and it's actually very nice to be able to print things quite a bit faster. I've been using the structural setting, and it seems to be very reliable. So aside from that, let's continue on to the video. <sighs> Oh, also this is the same area that I was recording yesterday. It just happened to snow a lot last night. <laughs> so while all of this is great, there is still one thing about this machine that I'm kind of iffy on, and that's definitely not the hardware. The hardware is fantastic. It comes down to the software. The software is kind of mid, and I feel like it could definitely be better. There's some things that feel like they're clearly missing, and there's some things that I feel like are kind of broken, as they don't work very well. So one thing that comes off uh, the top of my head is the fact that when you're going to print something, if I have something I sliced originally for the first tool head, I can't switch it to the second tool head after I've already sliced it here on the printer, which would be very convenient because instead I either have to swap the filament or re-slice it on the computer and then upload it to the printer again. And that's kind of annoying. Another thing that I would like more control over is the lights. The lights don't really allow me to control anything, and one thing that I would really like with them is to have them completely turn off if I haven't been there for like five minutes. They're dim, but that dimming is actually really annoying. And I would also like to be able to say, just leave it on full brightness. Honestly, I would like an entire section on the panel about controlling the lights. That's a more minor one, but something I would still like to be able to do with the Prusa XL. As the printer was still $2,500 with the two second tool head. So features like that that are smaller, I feel like should be added. Granted, because this is Prusa, they will probably end up doing it at some point, and that's why I'm not gonna be complaining about that too much, as Prusa has had a very good history of adding features software-wise later down the line and constantly improves the printer. Just take a look at the Mark III, which is still getting updates now that it's 2023, and it was released 2017? <laughs> that's kind of crazy. So I'm really hoping the Prusa XL has the same thing happen. One other thing that I would like to be improved with the Prusa XL is also how much filament is wasted for the using two tool heads. For using two tool heads, I'd almost feel like it should be wasting nothing, yet it is still wasting something. It's definitely a lot less than using a single tool head, but that's just another thing that I would like to eventually get worked out, if it's even possible. I'm still not entirely sure if it would, because it may leave marks, but Either way, I feel like they should let you have the option to, as I don't think it would compromise the quality all too much on certain prints. So yeah, that's my experience with the Prusa XL over the last three months. Definitely a good machine. I can't say I'd recommend it to everyone, as it is very expensive, and a Bamboo Lab may be a better option for some people. Though for me personally, I'm just really excited to see how the Prusa XL develops going forward, and I can't wait to see what they do with it. One other issue that I have that I didn't really mention was the filament sensor, as it, in two different prints, it didn't actually catch that it ran out of filament, causing those to fail. The reason I didn't mention that in this video is because it may have actually been my fault, as I had a setting in here that said don't detect it, something like that, and it just caused the sensors to not really work properly. I'm not sure why they have that setting and some others don't exist, but yeah may have been my fault. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it or found it useful, and I'll see you later. Bye! When you want to get off that darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Good size, we gotta go.